Hello, my beautiful friends. So today we're gonna to talk about my seven top tips for PhD research proposal writing. This is a follow on from my last video from last week, so go check that out. I'll put the links around. Um, and now let's talk about that. It's such an important thing. So let's get into it. If you're new to this channel, please remember to subscribe and hit that bell notification because I'm gonna share everything I've learned about doing a PhD, getting good at doing a PhD, academia, tips, tricks, and mental health hacks to help you out. So please remember to subscribe. Okay, let's look at this PhD research proposal writing. The first thing I wanna talk about is the last thing that you should write, and that isn't the final page, it's the title. Now you see a title for a research proposal is very, very important. Um, it has to be understandable. You wanna keep it to less than about 15 words, closer and under 10, to be honest, would be awesome. Um, and the thing about the title is, it's meant to capture in a single sentence what your proposal is about. And that can be pretty challenging. So what I like to do is write it at the very end of any grant, any application, and if you're doing a PhD research proposal, just write it at the end. One, one thing I like to do is, as I'm writing my research proposal, sometimes you have those little like sparks of, uh, I guess, uh, inspiration or intelligence that pop out. And so what I do is, um, in, a, in a document or just on a, on a piece of paper, I write down the sentences or the words that I just connect with. Um, and so at the end of my grant or research proposal, I've got a load of words that um, I can sort of jigsaw piece together to create a title. Now, um, I've actually never created a title completely on my own. So whenever I think, yeah, this will be a good title, I approach my supervisor, I approach my colleagues, and I say, what do you think about this? Look, ultimately, if you're swapping out a word for another word, it doesn't really matter. That means you're on the right track. But what you want from them is the ability to understand what you're doing and kind of why you're doing it and the significance. And that's a pretty hard task for a single sentence. So yeah, write it last, try it out on a few people. If they can roughly get what you're doing from that, you're onto a winner. My second tip is put all of the important information at the front of the sections. Now, this is one thing I was terrible at doing. Now, imagine this, right? You're a PhD examination board person, and you need to read all of these different applications, and you kind of get a little bit lost about who's doing what. You know, you try your best, but you're just a person as well. Um, and so what I like to do is put all of the important information in the first paragraph of every section. That is the most important paragraph of every section. And that's because as they're going through different um, uh, applications, it's obvious what you're doing, right? I had this issue where I would you know, in I think in creative writing or script writing, they call burying the lead, where you put the important information right at the very back. Like you feel like for some reason you need to build up to this really important information, but that is not what you do with a grant application. Get it up front, really craft that first paragraph to make sure that it answers the question. It's kind of like, I guess, an executive summary. And then later on in the paragraph and in the word limit, you can include much more information. But, you know, Keep these people, the examination, admin, board, people, grant reviewers, keep them interested by giving them all the information they need to tick a mental box in their mind to be like, yes, this person has answered the question and um, I understand it, which is important. The third little trick is don't be too complicated. Um, it's, really, it's really challenging to not try to flex your academic or you know language muscles as you are writing. Um, it can be incredibly tempting to be like, I need to include all of the biggest words that I know. And it is important to include the field specific language, but I'd recommend that you don't include any unnecessarily verbose sort of definitions or wordy kind of explanations, because like I said, you've got to get into the, the mind of your audience. And in this case, the audience is a tired, 
frustrated academic that just wants to understand what you're doing so they can tick a box, let people know that you should or shouldn't be accepted into this, into this um, PhD program. Um, and yeah, that is so very important. Just keep it simple. So one thing I like to do is, um, one of the best tips I heard was, use a dictation software. So I use Dragon quite a lot when I'm writing blog posts or doing stuff and emails. Like I really like dictating what I'm saying. Um, so Dragon, as well as like just using Google as well. Um, Google Documents has a dictate uh, thing. And that works really, really well because if the dictation software doesn't know what you're saying, it's probably a little bit too complicated. Now I understand that there'll be field specific terminology that you have to use, but I think that's a really nice way of trying to get to grips with what the average person would understand. So there we are, dictate. Tip number four is all about figures. Now a picture paints a thousand words and a figure probably sort of gives 10,000 words, I reckon. Um, so if you can show a figure, and if you're allowed to put figures in, if you can show a figure that's clear, that hasn't got like weird extra information in it. And one thing I like to do is reproduce people's figures um, with permission if it's being published, but reproduce, but also kind of make clear the bit of the figure that I want to demonstrate because a lot of times scientific figures have got lots of information in that don't necessarily support what you want to say in your application and so i'll reproduce it you know change the color of a line make it bold get rid of the other stuff i have even been known to uh photoshop out other parts of the graph um, to include because you know you need to make the figure obvious and even though a figure paints 10,000 words, you wanna make sure that it's the right 10,000 words because it could be a figure demonstrates 100,000 words, but you only need 10,000 of the words. You know what I mean? That's gonna get a bit messy in terms of the uh, metaphor, but yeah, get rid of the bits of the figure if you're reproducing it that you don't need. Highlight it, arrows, like all of that stuff really helps. And um, once again, from the aspect of a reviewer looking at a grant application, you want it to be obvious as soon as you look at that figure or that graph, what it is you need to get from it. The caption goes a little way to helping that as well, but ultimately you need it to be super obvious. Um, so include figures because figures also do something very important. They also give the brain a chance to relax away from the words. Now, I don't know how many uh, words are in the average kind of grant application. Um, but for a research proposal, let's say it's between about 2,000 and 4,000 words. And if you're reviewing, say, 10 of them, that's a lot of words. That's like 40,000 words to get through. So a figure gives the reviewer a break. And so I like to space out my figures um, as I kind of can, as it, just so that it's like figure block of text, figure block of text. Um, and yeah, it really helps the reviewer get a nice feeling, and that's what really comes down to, is giving them a nice feeling towards your uh, research proposal or grant application. Okay, tip number five is all about formatting. Formatting is one of the most overlooked aspects of PhD research proposal writing and uh, grant applications, and I'll tell you why. It's because we think as scientists that our words matter the most and so we cram them in, we cram in loads of words, we say like, oh, you know, this is what we're doing, oh, doesn't it look meaty? And when you look back at it, you go, hmm, yeah, like I'm super awesome and this is like, this is some good work, this has got loads of words in it. But when you're a reviewer, looking at a big block of text is really, really intimidating, right? You look at it, you go, oh, Jesus Christ, like I've got to get through all of this. Um, but what you can do to help that is formatting and use everything. So use bold, italic, underline, and I don't mean just like chuck it in randomly. If you have an important point to make, or, you know, this one sentence just sort of like explains everything and just gives this sort of perfect little summary, bold it. Use space, use white space around important bits to make it stand out. The human brain 
will always try to pick out patterns. And when it's just reading line after line after line, then all of a sudden there's a break and bold, boom, you've got the brain's attention again, right? It's always looking for different things. It's trying to make sense of the environment. And so, uh, yeah, formatting. Um, I tend to do formatting as I go, but I check at the very end that I haven't overdone it. You can overdo it and it'll look like sort of like a teenager or a, you know, a kid has written this research grant proposal, but really it comes down to using formatting to highlight the most important parts and in combination with, I think it was tip number two, where you put all the information up the front, it is super powerful to make your proposal sticky, like stick in their mind because you've made the information um, obvious and you've put it up front. That combination is an absolute winner. Okay, tip number six is spell check and proofread. Now, you don't need to give this PhD examining panel any excuse to say no. They have plenty of other options to say no, but you don't want lousy spelling and grammar to actually allow them to dismiss the seriousness of your application. And so, uh, yeah, just use all of the normal like spell check things like Grammarly, use Word, um, but also it may be worth, if English is a second language, um, getting a reviewer or an editor to actually go through it um, and pay some money. Now, there are plenty of awesome places you can do that. Look at Upwork, look at Fiverr, um, look at other kind of freelancing um, uh, websites or apps where you can say, hey, I've got this amount of words and the, um, the reviewer and the editing should take about a week and it's worth it. Like it's worth the little amount of investment because you'll be sure that the, the examiners or the PhD uh, admissions panel can't just dismiss you because of silly, silly spelling mistakes that we all make. Okay, tip number seven for PhD research proposal writing is all about timing. Now, this is the weird thing that I had to learn is everything takes twice as long as you think. So if you think it takes two weeks, you've got to allow at least four weeks. And that's for a number of reasons. Firstly, um, a job will fill the void that you give it. So, you know, if you give it four weeks, you'll have that amount of time to relax. You could probably finish it in two weeks, but it's probably not gonna be your best work. So give it double the amount of time and chip away at it every single day, just a little bit at a time, you know, spread it out. And another thing is that quite often, um, if your research, potential research supervisor wants to see the work, they will just sit on it for ages. Academics and researchers and supervisors are incredibly busy people um, and they like to tell you that as well, but they uh, will sit on your proposal and without the without enough time, it may just be incredibly rushed. I've known people send it to their supervisors, get it back the day before with loads of corrections and have to pull all nighters and that sort of stuff. So what I like to do is I trick them and I say, hey, this is my uh, research proposal. Can you get it back to me? And I say a week before the deadline is, is that it's due. And uh, they go, oh yeah. So it means you get it back at least a week before and then you have a whole extra week to work on it. Um, it's a little bit tricky, but you've got to know, uh, I guess, how to work with these people. And that's one way I found that uh, getting stuff back on time was achievable. It was kind of like when I was younger, um, I had friends that would turn up like 20 minutes before would turn up 20 minutes late, directly on time. And so what we did um, one time as an experiment is we told all of my friends different times when the, you know, when the meeting started or when our event started and boom, they all arrived within about 15 minutes, minutes of each other, which was fantastic. And you need to do the same thing with your PhD supervisor um, if they want to see your research proposal is uh, yeah, just learn how they work and Tell them little white lies if you need them to get stuff back on time. So there we have it. There are my seven top tips for PhD research proposal writing. Let me know in the comments what you would add to that and uh, good luck. Go and watch my other video, which was the one before this, all about research proposals, all of the elements that you need to make it awesome combined with this video, I think 
you'll be on to an absolute cracker of a research proposal. Okay, I shall see you in the next video. Have a fantastic day, week, month, or whatever it is until you watched another video.